Which propaganda effort was so successful people still believe it today? Story 1. That touching a baby bird will make its mother reject it. Lies. Put the baby back in the nest if you can. But don't touch baby rabbits. I watched my pet mama rabbit eat all her babies one by one after we handled them. Well, I didn't watch it, but they disappeared pretty fast, and my parents were horrified trying to keep the blood cleaned up so my seven-year-old self wouldn't see the gore. Side note, kids are smart, just be honest with them, I knew what was happening. Oddly enough, that doesn't really apply to wild rabbits, at least not cottontails and swamp rabbits we have here. But I have heard about domestic breeds. This completely depends on how much you handle your rabbits in general. If you raise your rabbits from baby stage right after leaving the mother, your scent will be a part of their world. You will be a part of their family. Source, my cousins raised over a dozen rabbits and bred them off their babies, and they handled all of them all the time. Here's something that's horrifying. Sometimes rabbits just eat their young because they're stressed out, because they feel too crowded, because they feel territorial. Cannibalism happens, but it doesn't happen if you give them enough space, enough free time outside of their cage, expose them to normal, everyday sounds so that activity in their area isn't considered dangerous, etc. Lies, put the baby back in the nest if you can. It's more nuanced than that. The average person is better off just leaving it alone. Birds have ways of dealing with this on their own, and your bumbling could potentially hurt the bird, damage the nest, etc. To say nothing of the fact that derping around on the ground is part of many birds' normal life cycle. If you see a baby bird on the ground, mama and papa bird are probably nearby waiting for you to go away. Once, the neighbor kids came to me for help because there was a baby bird on the ground and they thought something needed to be done. Even though it went against everything that made sense to them, I convinced them to leave the bird alone. Its mom would help it. Three hours later, it was dead, and they probably never believed me again. Apparently, there are no right answers when it comes to helping baby birds. Better to just let nature do its thing, however cruel it might seem. Unless it's a crow, in which case I will raise it to be my best friend. Story 2. That the old woman who sued McDonald's over burning herself with her coffee was just money hungry. For clarity, an elderly woman was a passenger in a car pulled over in the lot to add sugar after getting a coffee and it spilled all over her lap. It burned her really bad and she just set out to get McDonald's to pay her hospital bills because they served the coffee way too hot. They ended up launching this whole PR campaign where they smeared this poor lady, even taking out spots in local papers over how silly and money-hungry she was. Comedians, musicians, and radio hosts made fun of her and made her out to be money-hungry instead of a victim. Yeah, she had third-degree burns in-slash-on her genitalia. She originally requested that they pay her five-figure medical bill. They were stonewalled. She sued, and it was the judge who decided to make an example out of them since it was proven that they have been purposefully selling near-boiling cups of coffee to discourage refills despite being warned that this was unhealthy and that the cups were not made to hold liquids that hot. I object to anyone who continues to make smart burned genital areas comments to court photos of her. In addition, the payment the judge ordered were the revenues from two days' worth of coffee sales for McDonald's. They barely really felt it. Without going into too many details, the words fused and labia could be used to describe the situation. I've had to correct so many people about this. For anyone who doesn't already know, that McDonald's was already known for making their coffee too hot, think nearly boiling when served, and the woman in this case was severely burned on her legs and crotch from the lid also not being put on right. I may have misremembered the lid, it's been a while since I read all of this. McD is covering themselves by making it out that she was just an idiot and they have to put the warning on the lids now because people are stupid. They're half right, but they were very wrong in what they did. This one makes me sad. She had to receive skin grafts over the burned area. Their coffee was kept at a constant temperature of 180 to 190 degrees, which caused third-degree burns in seconds when coming into contact with skin. This lady took an undeserving beating by the media. I remember when this happened in 92 and hearing all the comedians and news spots talking about this greedy woman who was suing McDonald's because coffee is hot. We all joked about it and how dumb she was. I didn't find out the truth about this for like 15 years. McDonald's for their part in covering that up. Story 3. 
Many Korean people believe that fans can cause death. Even my mother, who moved to America in her mid-teens, still prohibits me from leaving a fan on overnight for fear of death. There is a conspiracy theory that the South Korean government spread this myth as propaganda to prevent energy overuse, but its origins are unknown. It's strange that many Koreans still believe this myth considering it is one of the most technologically advanced countries. I've also heard that some s are covered up by the police reporting that a fan was left on and blaming it on that, publicly at least. Not sure how true that is. I've heard that as well, though it should be noted that a lot of post-war Korean homes were heated by small furnaces with exhaust flues going under the floor, which is why most modern Korean homes have heated floors. The problem being that the furnaces were coal-fired and any leak would result in a deadly carbon monoxide, or dioxide, can't remember right now, leak into the home which may have fueled the fan death myth. It's a real danger! Remember, John Lennon was killed by a fan! <sighs> I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. That's similar to the German concept of Zugluft that people think of as a health deteriorating force. Zugluft exists where windows, doors open ajar and a movement of cold air occurs leading to colds, stiff muscles, pneumonia, bronchitis, etc. What is with this? When I lived in Russia, people there were always desperate to stop any airflow through a room. Once in class, my Mexican friend and I were hot on the fourth floor of this ancient building, so we opened the window and propped the door open for a cross breeze, and our teacher flipped out when she showed up. She called the airflow, can't pronounce that, and said it would make us all sick. As a Canadian, I call that fresh air, and I'd never consider it bad. In fact, I'll open a window, albeit briefly, at negative 30 degrees to clear the stale air out of a room in winter if I'm feeling it. Yeah, while I'm not one of those people who likes to sleep with a fan on, I do love getting a good cross breeze growing. Not only does it keep you cool, but fresh air is just so nice. Story 4. Autism and Vaccines The original guy wanted to advertise his own vaccine, but did not disclose this when he published a hit piece on the mainstream vaccine at the time in a reputable journal. His alternative vaccine failed, his paper was bashed and ultimately retracted, yet people smart enough to work at Google don't vaccinate their kids. Andrew Wakefield, a former gastroenterologist and the man responsible for this anti-vax show, originally wanted to prove that vaccines were responsible for bowel disease as well as linking it to autism. He was put through a tribunal by the GMC, and it was found that not only had he lied about his research, but he was found to have committed 12 acts of abuse against developmentally disabled children after he put them through unnecessary and invasive procedures. To try and prove that vaccines were responsible for autism and bowel disease, he put young children through unnecessary colonoscopies and lumbar punctures, spinal taps. He was struck off from the medical register and is no longer allowed to practice medicine. He continues to make a living promoting and speaking at anti-vaccine propaganda events. People should remember that. Anti-vaxxers are looking to an abuser found to have put developmentally disabled children through unnecessary medical procedures for advice. Let's not understate how much of a piece of cr the man is. Story 5. Those teeth are supposed to be perfectly white. People should know that a healthy set of teeth doesn't mean they're perfectly white. Super white teeth are not even normal. Our enamel will slowly become more translucent as we age, revealing the color of the dentin, which is yellow underneath it. That's why as we get older, our teeth will become yellower. Doesn't mean they're not healthy or unclean. I see teeth whitening similar to other anti-aging measures. It doesn't make you healthier, but it does make you look younger. This is one of the biggest scams by dental care companies, I believe. They must be making a fortune selling whitening toothpaste, which really doesn't do anything different from other toothpaste, except with added abrasives. Teeth are supposed to be off-white. Think of teeth like skin. Skin comes in different shades, just like teeth. At least that's what my dentist told me while he was checking my prostate. Did he have one hand or both hands on your shoulders? Think of teeth like skin? What the f did you just bring upon this cursed land? Story 6. That Napoleon Bonaparte was short. He was 5 feet and 7 inches tall, which might be a little on the shorter side by modern standards, but it was around the average height for people back then. The idea that he was short actually came from a British propaganda campaign to mock him. Also, due to starting out as a artillery officer, when he got high rank, he sometimes liked to micromanage the cannons, a job meant for corporals. 
This earned him the nickname Little Corporal from his troops. It's a term of endearment. The Brits may have heard it and put more emphasis on the little part. It really must be understood how little or petite is often an adjective that suggests endearment in French. Another example, boy slash girlfriend, translates to petit ami, petit ami or little friend. It's also worth noting that his bodyguards were all significantly taller than him, which added to the misconception somewhat, and wore massive hats. The French measurement of a foot was equivalent to about 13 inches of today's inches, so at 5 foot he was actually 5 foot 5 or slightly above. The cheeky Brits knew this. Well, thank heavens we're all taking the time to make sure we know exactly how tall and not short Napoleon was. Frankly, we should all really be talking about Napoleon III, his descendant, who tried to take over, failed. Then, when his soldiers asked, what should we do now, he tried to shoot himself and missed. Seriously, go read up on him. Way more fun. That a man should spend two months' salary for his future wife's wedding ring, which absolutely must be a diamond. Screw that! I spent a total of 150 bucks for my wife's ring, and she loves it, and it's a sapphire. Diamonds are no more precious than any other precious gem, and manufactured gems are way easier to come by, are more perfect, and so much cheaper. As long as it's an actual ruby, sapphire, emerald, etc., it will be just as good as one dug out of the ground. Fake ones are good for a teen gift or just friends kind of gift, but they'll shatter pretty easy compared to the real thing. Manufactured gems are also exactly the same. They're heated, pressurized carbon got it. Only real difference is no one died for the ones coming from a lab. Did you know De Beers is running ad campaigns saying otherwise? God, they annoy me. Story 8. Lie detector tests are accurate. They're junk science at best. People, when the inventor of the device and procedures used is on record saying it's crap, we should probably listen. Looking at you, Florida, for allowing lie detector test results as evidence in court. They're such horse crap. I lost my job as a government contractor because of a lie detector test. I wasn't goddamn lying. That test just made me nervous as I remember someone told me one of their questions was along the lines of, if you have a choice of saving your family or the prime minister, would you choose the prime minister? How can anyone answer that without stressing out? Story 9. I am from Germany and some of my grandparents still believe the stuff they were told about Jews by the Nazis. Like, when a Jewish person dies on a Christian holiday, they get hung behind the door and everyone who comes in has to spit on him. It's some vile stuff. I can't believe how they were spoon-fed with this in their early years. Story 10. Drinking fountains are unhealthy. The bottled beverage industry commissioned and published a series of studies in the early 1990s when they decided to get into the bottled water business. The problem was that their largest competitor was free and available in schools, parks, and public buildings everywhere. Anyone who took even a semester of biology knows that if you walk around and swab and culture anything, you'll find that it's covered in bacteria. That's the ecology of the planet Earth. My school found three water fountains that were above the legal limit for lead. Okay, fine, not all water fountains are great. That sounds more like a problem with your school than with water fountains in general. Also, I'm sure there are some folks in Michigan who would take umbrage with this story as well, but that's a whole bigger issue. Story 11. Nestle does a smear campaign saying formula feeding is best. They mainly done it in third world countries. Nestle owns majority of formula companies, so they got rich, and uneducated third world countries suffered as they would rather use this healthier option, but made it with dirty water, meaning children died, which wasn't needed as most have no issues making breast milk. Nestle is amongst the most evil companies in the world, and they're still doing these messed up practices today. The way they monopolize water sources should be outright illegal. Story 12. Apparently in the 80s, KFC ran a Christmas-themed ad in Japan, and to this day, the Japanese eat KFC on Christmas. When I was in Japan on Christmas, I won some quiz at a party, and they gave me fried chicken because they believed that was our traditional Christmas food. It was ridiculous, and is one of those really odd memories of mine. Hate to break it to Japan, but Chinese takeout is the official food of Christmas. That is, if some dog-related tragedy befalls your turkey. Story 13. Engagement rings are required for marriage. In Germany, you buy one ring. When you're engaged, you wear it on the left hand. When married, you switch it to the right. Very practical. Story 14. When Edward Bernays, the father of public relations, literally renamed propaganda that we want people to think it's not bad to public relations and advertising, and he literally admitted in a book 
he made called propaganda. Propaganda is quite literally just media that is attempting to persuade you. It might be honest or dishonest, but no matter what, it is still propaganda. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 15. Absinthe makes you hallucinate was propaganda because it was hurting the wine industry. Propaganda. Do you have a cold? Too much absinthe. That's meant to discourage use? Shh. That makes me just want it more. I was honestly shocked when I met someone that still believed this. Like, I thought the whole absinthe causing hallucinations myth was truly well and done with, but I've met a surprising number of people who still believe that, and it shocks me. Story 16. Carrots make your vision better. This rumor was started in World War II to hide the invention of radar. The public was told that Allied pilots found the German bombers during the Blitz because they had good eyesight because they ate their carrots. But in reality, it was that the British had an early radar system in place that they did not want the Germans to find out about and bomb, and that carrots were an abundant vegetable at that time in the war. To be fair, a vitamin A deficiency will cause vision problems, and carrots are a good source of vitamin A. I think this propaganda was partially built on the pseudoscience that an overdose of vitamins provides superhuman abilities. Story 17, the myth that Spartans threw unhealthy babies off mountains. This was Athenian propaganda. Actually, people from every polis would abandon babies if they felt like it. See Oedipus. The Athenians claimed that Spartans ritualized the practice. The Spartans' main problem was all the child violating. Pederasty wasn't uniquely Spartan. It was a Greek and Roman thing. Story 18, sugar companies paid the media to say that fat made you fat. I mean, all food in extreme amounts will put you on the heavy side, but sugar is the true villain here. There's a book written in the 80s, I think, called The White Death. The author was basically hounded almost to death by sugar companies and mocked and treated like for telling the truth. You may be thinking of pure, white, and deadly. Also, check out Dr. Lustig's talk on high fructose corn syrup. Story 19. That big curvy line of toothpaste with a Dairy Queen curl we've seen in every toothpaste ad? You don't need more than a pea-sized smear of paste on your brush. I always only used a little pea-sized, but I've also never really thought about the massive squeeze they put on the brush in the commercials, lol. You think they did this so you could buy their product faster, meaning you have to buy more? Go through, that's exactly why. Same thing for other things. For example, the plop plop fizz fizz commercial for Alka-Seltzer showing the person taking two tablets. I never really did huge amounts of toothpaste as a kid because when I tried using that much, I would just end up with a bunch of extra toothpaste running out of my mouth. I realized real fast, if it's just pooling out of my mouth, it isn't cleaning my teeth. Seems like a waste. Story 20. MSG will kill you and is horrible to ingest. I'm allergic to MSG. Really, it is delicious and your body produces it naturally while breaking down regular salt. Some people do have sodium issues and it may not be good for them, but that's a tiny micro percentage of people. There's MSG in breast milk, tomatoes, and Parmesan cheese, etc., etc. It is a natural component of most protein-containing foods. Sodium or glutamic acid are in literally everything, the latter being an amino acid. You couldn't be allergic to MSG without being allergic to those, at which point eating anything would be bad for you. Story 21, that if you ask if someone is a cop, if they are a cop, they legally are required to say yes they are. Of course they aren't required to, that defeats the entire purpose of working undercover. It's standard procedure while working undercover to say yes, lol, when asked if you're a cop. Bonus points for dabbing. I saw a documentary recently about a former undercover cop in the USA. Apparently, he once got in a car and had a gun pulled on him. They asked, are you a cop? He said, yes, of course I am. They all burst out laughing, and he kept his cover. Iconic Breaking Bad moment. Story 22, that turning the light on in the back seat of the car is illegal. Am I the only kid whose father simply said it makes it harder to see? Yes, and once I started driving, I realized why my dad got so mad. I laughed when I heard this because my mom used to tell me that. To this day, I still get nervous when it's on, even for just a second. Story 23. Knuckle cracking gives you arthritis. Is cracking your knuckles actually bad for you in any way? There is research that shows it may make your grip weaker over time, but it's minimal and takes many years. 
If it did, I would make a living being an overly dramatic old white person in infomercials that can't pick up a bottle. And I'm only 31. Has this ever happened to you? You're trying to pick up a bottle, but you crack your knuckles ten times a day? Then you might need... <laughs> I didn't think this joke through. It really doesn't play well as audio only. I'm gonna leave this in. Teach myself a lesson. Story 24. Diamonds as a symbol of eternal love. Also, the belief that diamonds are rare when in reality it's because they are artificially scarce. I mean, they're pretty rare because they're only found below level 20 or so. It takes me a while to just find one. Every kiss begins with slaves. I think I watched that adult film. Story 25. The lie that nuclear power is terrible. It is worse than renewables. However, instead of chucking huge quantities of dangerous waste into the air like a coal power plant, it can all be contained and 95% can be reprocessed into new fuel. In the 60s and 70s, a lot of oil giants used advertising to link its reputation to the very real danger of nuclear weapons. And if this hadn't have happened, global warming would have been much less of an issue. Very few people realize that coal power actually causes more deaths per MW than nuclear power due to nitrous oxide emissions, even when Chernobyl is included in the statistics. Story 26. That fat is unhealthy. The nutrient, that is, not actually being fat. Fat-free Italian dressing is pure sugar, whereas normal Italian dressing has almost no sugar. This is often the case with many fat-free products. Fat is a necessary part of any diet. Eliminating it completely will never be healthy. To quote Paracelsus, a Swiss physician born in the 1490s, the dose makes the poison. Same thing for salt. Salt deprivation can cause severe cramps. People take the idea of reducing the amount of salt in their diet to the next level and eliminating it entirely. Story 27. That monosodium glutamate, MSG, is harmful. If such an allergy were ever possible, it has never been proven, you'd literally die because it means you're either allergic to sodium or glutamate, which are in almost every single food or drink known to man. That Listerine invented the term halitosis for bad breath. They didn't. It predates them by decades. It's just something that sounds nice to say because you get to attack a big corporation. How dare you take away my ability to attack a big corporation? It isn't like there are tons of other reasons to get mad at them. I need this reason. Story 28. Columbus was the only person who believed the world was round. Literally everyone who could read knew that the Earth was round. Nobody thought Columbus would fall off the edge. They thought his crew would starve to death before reaching the East Indies and he totally would have. The reason that the Portuguese reject Columbus's request for money and ships is because they calculated how far the East Indies were to the West based on the raw data provided by the works of Marco Polo. The Portuguese had a rough idea of how far Japan was to the West of Portugal. They knew how vast the combined Atlanto-Pacific Ocean was, and the size of the Earth was known well before that. Aristophanes of Cyrene calculated it pretty accurately in 240 BC. Columbus was lucky that there was a new continent where he thought Asia was. Story 29. Camels don't store water in their humps. They store fat in their humps. They store fat in their humps. Me too, camels. Me too. You mean there isn't a bunch of water sloshing around in there like a big empty tank? I really wonder who benefited from that propaganda. Story 30. That you only use 10% of your brain. In reality, you use pretty much all of your brain capacity, so neuroscience has proven quite thoroughly that you only use 10% of your brain in the same way we only use 33% of a traffic light. Story 31. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, serving it up Gary's way. Blech. At least we got breakfast cereal out of the deal. I love cold cereal. But yeah, what a bunch of... I like cereal, but honestly, only as a dessert. I will literally only typically eat cereal when most people would eat ice cream. And no, not even super sweet cereal. I'm talking Cinnamon Life or Chex because I'm boring as... Story 32. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and that cereal, toast, sugary things are part of a balanced breakfast. Know plenty of people who function perfectly without eating anything for breakfast. If I recall correctly, it was a campaign run by Kellogg's. Story 33. That you need to eat three or more large meals per day to be happy and healthy, and that a sugary breakfast is by far the most important part of the day. Story 34. The Armenian Genocide Never Happened. My Turkish friends still believe this. 
President Erdogan wants to know your location. Story 35, Nixon's drug campaign. Do you mean his anti-drug crusade or the fact that the CIA was the global drug trade at that point? Story 36, the McDonald's hot coffee smear campaign to hide the lawsuit. Story 37, if you masturbate, you will go blind. Son, if you keep masturbating, you'll go blind. I'm over here. <laughs> if that were the case, I'm pretty sure I would be blind, deaf, and probably losing my sense of smell. Interpret that however you want, because I'm not even sure what I mean. Story 38. People still believe dogs don't see in color, when in fact they do. They see less of it than humans do, but they most definitely see in color. Story 39. That fat is the thing to avoid in foods, taking away the spotlight from sugar. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.